Warning, this show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. This show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoy listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts. This is Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here's my co-host, Angel. And today, in the quarantine edition, we are looking into eating bat as food. Mm-mm. Yum. This is how this all went down. Apparently. 2020, but... the year of the bat. <laughs> The year of the bat. <laughs> Actually, what's interesting and somewhat relevant, obviously, as we are in the current pandemic of COVID-19, when I was looking into bats for this episode, a lot of people seem to believe that the virus came from Wuhan province of China because of eating bats. And Is it obviously, not? yeah. I mean, there's a lot of theories. At first, they're like, it's bats. Then they're like, it's snakes. And then it's a pangolin. Yeah, it was like I a whole load of things. I didn't even know what a things. pangolin was. It's an armadillo. Oh, thing. is that what it is? Yeah, oh. they look like little armored, rolly mammal things. <laughs> right, huh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. we're not going to dive too much into COVID-19, obviously, because I think everyone's had enough of that in the media. I do want to clear up the fact that I think when it comes to a lot of the research and stuff, I found that bats might not actually be the full cause of COVID-19. Mm-hmm. So- Intrigue. I think when the whole thing and pandemic happened, yeah, um, a lot of the videos of people that were posting in social media were about these like people from China apparently eating bats or whatever. And they were starting to say that, that was the problem for all of it. But the more I looked into a lot of these videos, apparently a lot of them were debunked because most of those videos, A, didn't actually happen in Wuhan. In fact, most of them didn't even happen in China. <laughs> and most of them actually didn't even happen within this year. There's, I think there was a popular one that was seen about this Asian-looking lady eating a bat, and apparently that happened in Oceania two years ago. Where's Oceania? I think it's in the Pacific Ocean. It's close like to the in Philippines. the ocean. Yeah, it's <laughs> like somewhere why between you don't the Philippines go on a cruise and now. Australia, I think, or something. It seems to be COVID was caused more by reckless or uneducated health practices than anything, than people eating bats. Or maybe it was from a bat, but you know, it's not from a lot of the videos that were coming out on media, so it just... Be careful and all that. The fact is we have it. Yeah, the fact is we let's have it. Let's deal with that. Yeah, let's worry about that more than anything. But anyway, that's all we're going to say about that. We're going to go back to bats now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Today we'll cover a brief history of how bats became a form of food. Where in the world do people eat bats and some of the dishes that people make with bats? Batman. Do you think Batman eats bats? I, I don't know, actually. I think in his, if he's in I the bat mood, I think he was yeah. bitten by a bat, so a bat ate him. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's like a whole bat orgy, <laughs> food orgy, uh, a borgy. I would, uh, I would extract revenge on that bat and eat it back. Yeah, that's probably what he did. He doesn't really. Oh, no, talk. wait, he's not even a superhero in the sense where like Spider Man was bitten by a spider. I don't think a bat yeah. ever actually touched him. I think he just he's hung just out like, with bats. Bats are cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he probably oh. just hung out. He's like, oh, I'm in a cave. You know what we should bats. do then? We should eat Batman. Mm. See if it tastes <laughs> like bats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know because I've never had a bat in my mouth. Yeah. Neither have I. Well, they, just, they don't look appetizing. No, they, they do look kind of terrifying. Um, but I kind of looked into what exactly bats are. So bats are a mammal species, just like humans. There's over... 1200 species of bats which actually cover about 20 percent of of all the different mammal species in the world there's a lot of bats it's a lot of types of bats yeah and they are the only mammals capable of true flight by true flight we mean an animal that's capable of staying in air without using height gravity or wind to keep afloat it usually requires a special set of biological modifications to their body in order to keep flapping um, insects and birds are probably the most common types of animals who are able to achieve true flight. Mm. 
So while other mammals would use things... I can't think of another mammal that flies. Well, I think one common one that people might think flies is the like the flying squirrel. No, they just glide. Yeah, they do they just glide. They jump off trees. So most other mammals who we think can fly usually only glide using height or soar using wind to stay in the air. So soaring is when you use... I'm just picturing a goat running off a cliff and just gliding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So majestic. Yeah. I think that's where the whole term when pigs fly comes to because mammals don't usually mm. are believed to be. F- They're not very aerodynamic. Flight. Not really. We're just fat pieces of <laughs> lard. Just roll. <laughs> <laughs> the whole class of bats are divided essentially into two suborders Mega Chiroptera or Megabats and Micro Chiroptera or Microbats. Microbats. Yeah. Uh, which order do you think contains more species? The megabats or the microbats? Probably micro. Yeah. Yeah. Little oh, things have yeah. little have big variations. Yeah, exactly. Of the 1,200 species, there are about f- a thousand of them which are microbat, compared to only under 200 species of megabats. Mm. Now, when we do say megabats, they're not actually super big. Their wings only stretch to about three feet or less, actually. So it's kind of tiny. Oh, now, there are like cute. really big mega bats that can probably be known to spread as much as five and a half feet or whatever. But for the most part, mega bats are not that big. I've seen um, a pretty big bat before. Yeah. I've um, actually never seen a bat in real life until that oh, point. Really? I was in Indonesia. Yeah. I was in Bali. And like, there's just this lump hanging from a tree branch. Right. I was like, why did somebody tie like a garbage bag <laughs> onto this tree? <laughs> so for some reason, I took a picture of it, yeah. not knowing it's a bat. And the flash went off and then I woke oh, no. it up. <laughs> it just like opened its wings, right. stared at me. It was kind of like, go fuck yourself, lady. And then like, <laughs> curled back into its little garbage baggy sack. <laughs> it was really cute. But that's... it was it was a big one. Right. Yeah. So that's probably a mega bat. Um and the reason why I also say that it, it does make sense is because what differentiates megabats and microbats, what I find were two things. So one thing is microbats have bigger ears and use echolocation to see, while megabats have smaller ears and usually use their vision to see. So oh, what probably see. happens is you flash the thing and it actually saw the flash rather than microbats yeah. who use... They didn't look very pleased. <laughs> yeah, because microbats usually use their ears, megabats would use their eyes to see, so... You probably blinded that bat. It's like, come on, man. Poor guy. Yeah. I feel bad. Another differentiator is usually you see megabats in trees and microbats are in caves. That's why the whole echolocation thing is more useful in the cave. It's not really that useful in real life or outside of caves because there's nothing to bounce the sound around. Another last differentiator is diet. So megabats are known usually also as fruit bats. Which means Aww. they usually eat fruits. I well, would give him a banana. Yeah. Different kinds of bananas. All the kinds. <laughs> Plantain Big ones, bananas. Small Little ones. tiny bananas. Yeah. And other kinds of fruits. What do you think microbats are more commonly known as? Like vampire bats? Exactly. Blood, yeah. blood suckers. So microbats are known usually also as vampire bats so they generally eat blood or insects or sometimes small animals as well Mm -mm. what i did find most interesting while researching bats though was how many different cultures include bats to some degree in their history what's even more fascinating is that bats are one of those kind of they're not all good animals or they're not all bad for example in chinese art you seem to find bats portrayed in a positive outlook almost always. They're usually seen as a symbol of happiness. Um, they're cute. Yeah. I think well, they're cute. Yeah, I think so too. Um, the, the example in Chinese art would be the wufu, I think it's called, which translates into the five blessings. So usually when you draw out these five blessings, you could usually see a bat as the animal of choice to be included. Oh. In some areas of Europe, like Spain, Switzerland, or England, you usually see parts of their... You usually see bats in their history. Um, you commonly find them in armors or coat of arms, uh, really often symbolizing strength or vigilance. Mm. Yeah. 
I don't think kind of funny strong. for yeah for <laughs> like tiny little animals. They're apparently seen as the strong side. That's cute. Yeah. Um, on the flip side, though, places like Nigeria or the Ivory Coast find them to be more evil or spiritual. They see bats as part of witchcraft or as ghosts or spirits. It's like because they're nocturnal. Maybe, yeah. I think that's a part of it. Like, you know, it's kind of when you're walking at night and you see a bat, it's not the most... You see, like, a shape flapping yeah. around. Yeah, it's not a friendly-looking sight. Or it's kind of scary when you, I don't know, a sample, you take a you flash a whole group of bats <laughs> and they all start <laughs> flying at you. It's kind of terrifying. That is kind of terrifying. In Christianity, yeah. you also see bats as unclean or evil, apparently. And even in some modern American perceptions, we usually see bats as something dark or evil, you know. Yeah, they just get associated with vampires. Yeah, vampires, sometimes demons. Uh, even if you think about Batman, right? Like, he's not the most jolly superhero. But he's super rich, so it's cool. Yeah, he's super cool. So he has strength and vigilance, but he's super dark. But he doesn't kill people. Apparently, yeah, no, he doesn't. So... They're almost, I guess, if they would be a hero, they'd be an anti-hero. Broody. broody like a broody yeah. hero. Yeah. Jon Snow's probably a bat. <laughs> Jon Snow just makes no, but, this face that makes him look constipated. Yeah. He looks, he's too much of a bitch to be a bat, though. <laughs> <laughs> I see him as more of a ferret, but like less <laughs> cute, like a less cute ferret. Like a, like ferret. a ferret that never got brushed. Like if you walk into a ferret's house in the middle of it taking a dump. <laughs> yes, like a very, that's what very mangy ferret that's been partying for too much. A ferret with diarrhea. <laughs> that's Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> I see it, I see it. I'll be yeah, by that. He's not a bat. He's definitely like a, a weird... A pooping ferret. ferret. Yeah. <laughs> I do believe that the reason for the polarity here of loving and hating bats are because they're kind of, they really are kind of cute if you see them, I guess, in the they day. They are. I think so. Uh, but when it comes to, say, like environment stuff, they could be good for the environment because, you know, they... they do they pollinate? I think they, they pollinate. probably help because they do eat fruits and stuff and some flowers yeah. and stuff. But they also can be harmful disease carriers, as we know from SARS. And I think it's SARS, right? Or what's the other one? SARS and MERS. I don't, yeah, was Merce bat too? One of them? I know one of them was pig. I don't know. <laughs> mad cow was cow. <laughs> no, mad cow is... They just called it that a to sh- confuse a you. A ferret. <laughs> <laughs> a great ferret disease. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of how bats really are. So I guess like Batman, it's hard to tell if society's better with or without bats. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gotham is better, I guess, with Batman. But sure, see, we'll go with that. We'll some go. people say if Batman wasn't there, you wouldn't also have villains who are that sophisticated. Exactly. It's like an arms so, race. Yeah. When it comes to where people eat bats, only about 13% of bat species are actually hunted for different reasons. Uh, they're hunted for food, medicine, sport, or for good. So like their hide or their hair or teeth, sorry. Your teeth? Yeah. Uh, usually that's what? probably more for medicinal stuff. Oh, okay. the teeth. I don't think there was I didn't think I found I don't think I found anything about people eating bad teeth. How, how do you eat teeth? Yeah. I don't <laughs> it's know. just I not don't know. Good. Yeah. It's not so, not good. They probably grind it like bone, you know? When oh, they grind okay. it and put it in a powder yeah, like, and make that's... it like into medicine and stuff. That's how okay. I would assume it happened. <laughs> I thought they just straight up like popping them like tic tacs. <laughs> 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 but it's the least minty <laughs> and it goes it, down real rough <laughs> yeah it probably if you do the vampire bats it would probably just stab you you'd get ulcers yeah, you get in internal bleeding yeah you'd, you'd cure your heart disease but get ulcer <laughs> when it comes to food though which order do you think of bats are most commonly hunted micro or mega probably mega yeah yeah because there's more meat Exactly. So almost half of megabat species are hunted for food. Obviously, it's not as much. It's not as many species as um, microbats. So half of it would be a hundred versus half of microbats would be six hundred. But it's still a lot of megabat species. And we think about thirteen percent of bat species. That's I don't know somewhere that's between a some hundred something. <laughs> yeah, if you have 
1,200 bat species, 10% is 120, and th I don't know what 3%, anyway, it would be somewhere That's in the lot. 150. It's a so, good amount. Yeah, math. That's not my forte. <laughs> no. But I mean, it's a lot, yeah. It is a lot. So it mostly is megabat species. Historically speaking, humans seem to have been eating bats for thousands of years. Some archaeologists, some archaeologists suggest that humans may even be eating them as early as 74,000 years ago. Ooh. You can see that's bats old. eaten all around the world. Yeah, it's, that's. I think it wasn't even Homo sapien at that point. <laughs> it was a different kind of Homo. We have Neanderthals. Yeah. Other humanoid species. Yeah, different. Before homo. we came along and probably ate them all too <laughs> yeah it's probably the hairier the hairier one maybe i don't know so today bats are eaten essentially all around the world like asia africa europe Oceania, or south america we can't cover all the differences in one episode so i'm just gonna briefly cover all of this with some factoids factoids in africa bat hunting is most common in west africa and central africa like ghana mm -hmm. but apparently in the east coast of africa in tanzania you could find one of the largest bats, the Pemba flying, flying fox. fox. Yeah. Actually, most of the actually bats bad. are called flying foxes. Well, they kind of have, especially the, some bats have a fox-like appearance to them. They do. Their snouts are kind of similar. Yeah. And the, some of the micro bats have ears that are foxy-like, I guess. Yeah, they're cute. They're yeah. so cute. So the Pemba flying fox is named after the island of Pemba off the Tanzania coast. These bats you can mean stretch. Tanzania? Tanzania, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what country are you talking about? Reading is hard. Okay. <laughs> Reading is hard. I mean, we, we've we regressed to, I don't know, our brains are not yeah, all there. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. Keep going. It's named after the island of Pemba off the Tanzania coast. These bats can stretch as large as five and a half feet. For Ooh, the wings. So this one boy. I was mentioning there, some bats are a little bit bigger than the usual two and a half, three feet wing stretch of megabats. Megabats. Uh, once a common sight in dining tables and often roasted whole, these bats are now protected as they were once in the verge of extinctions. I think it was the 70s or 80s that they were so close to extinction that they just decided to protect them. And a big reason for it is because they were eaten because the Pemba people respected the bats. Mm -hmm. and when they were in the verge of extinction the government was like okay we probably should stop eating it and everyone <laughs> was like yeah we don't want it to go extinct so it was kind of, it seemed like a joint effort okay. you didn't you didn't have some karen wanting to speak to a manager about <laughs> keeping her right to eat that's actually surprising because i thought humans are just good at killing a thing until it's all gone and they're like oh shit kill this thing i think it depends i don't know i find more i don't know I don't, yeah. I'm not gonna. I mean, we all I'm we almost lost up. all the wolves. Yeah. We almost lost all the. Was it the buffalo? Yeah. Yeah. Too. Yeah, and I think some of sometimes it could be because of ignorance, but sometimes it could be because of arrogance. So yeah. It's a, it's well, a we depends. lost all the dodo birds because they wanted yeah. to make hats. So you know. A, I'm pretty sure the dodo birds just ra they're like the, they were like they're the real dumb looking. <laughs> so they I don't they were actually mammals and they were like goats. They were the ones who were jumping off the cliffs trying to fly. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what they sound like, yeah, I'd like to imagine that they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, smack. Yeah. In Asia. Most people seem to believe China is the most common place where people eat bats, but it's actually Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So every country in Southeast Asia, except Singapore, has some kind of um, history of hunting bats. The Indonesia, Philippines, and Malaysia seem to be the top hunters when it comes to bat hunting. Mm -hmm. These three countries now have some regulation to protect some bat species who are on the brink of extinction. Oh. I actually remember in back when I was in the Philippines... When we'd visit our old province where my mom's family came from, mm -hmm. the house there had a storage facility that got run over, that overrun by bats, and now it's just a bat cave. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So it was cool. We were terrible over. kids because then we had BB guns and tried to shoot. We, I don't think we ever killed a bat, but we tried to shoot it. But they're, I think they were micro bats because they were super tiny and they were just super quiet. But you'd hear them chirp once in a while. 
and kind of creepy because it's in the entrance of the um house so so before you come into the house the storage place Mm -hmm. and it was just there that house is actually kind of they're just they just hang out yeah they just hang out it was kind of cool i wish i could show you pictures of the house because it was this kind of mansion like old spanish mansion kind of house so oh, that it, sounds like a this sounds like a vampire fanfic it does it it <laughs> kind of resembles like if you think of um how uh what's that place in the north in game of thrones is called I didn't like we're all the game of oh <laughs> anyways it looks like one of those medieval kind of castles or whatever but anyway it's you not like super the fancy. place where all the um starks came from North Northridge. Wow. <laughs> North. <laughs> yeah, wherever that That's is. That's in California. So yeah, essentially it was it was a cool house. <laughs> in the rest of Asia, though, places like Bangladesh and India and Pakistan are also known to hunt bats, but it's actually rather infrequent. So as we mentioned, Southeast Asia is really the most common place in Asia. Yeah. In Europe, bat hunting does happen, but it's quite rare, especially for bats for food. Most likely reason for this is that fruit bats or mega bats are the edible type of bat species, as we mentioned. And most bats in Europe are vampire bats, which I think my they're guess would small. be they're too small. Yeah, they're just way too small to be worth eating. Unless you like grab a bunch of them like popcorn chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you just make them into nuggets. <laughs> Batty nuggets. <laughs> Can I just get like 20 nuggets? Did you know that in England, you don't get the 10 nuggets don't you get nine. Oh, interesting why you get six or nine which are multiples of three so i guess that makes weird sense sure i guess but yeah and they're if you, missing out on one nugget yeah damn <laughs> but if you do go to transylvania and visit dracula's house he has a drive through there where you could order bad nuggets you can true story <laughs> True story. Oh, do they? Is it deep fried? I don't know, actually. <laughs> Probably. Oh, that's nasty. I'm kidding. I don't. Remember. <laughs> that would be cool, though. Oh. oh. In Costanza, Italy, horseshoe bats were once commonly eaten for food, but like Pemba flying fox, they were also now protected by law. Yay. In Oceania, bats are most commonly hunted as well because they're, Oceania is mostly a bunch of tiny islands. Mm-hmm. Um, and That's what it, I was asking earlier. I'm like, are they literally in the ocean? Yeah, they are. They're, I think they're off the Pacific coast and there's a lot of tiny islands like Guam, Fiji, or Palau. The reason why they're commonly hunted there is because they're usually the only native land mammal, which means it's really just their only easy Mammal. simpler source of um food meat i guess bats um, don't look like they have that much meat on them i mean they, that's why i even wondered why people would eat bats anyway because they just look n- not not meaty not yeah. meaty at all like you're not gonna get much out of even the big ones you're not gonna get that much meat out of it yeah, well, I guess for Oceania, since it's the only one, or because there also there's a lot of them, right? So if you could catch a good number of them, then it's kind of good. Yeah. Um, as a random fact, a lot of the videos that were being circling around the internet of people eating bats come from Palau, hmm. not China. Not China. One of the most, the one of the more popular videos actually you could see in the background. It says Palau Resort. <laughs> <laughs> They're not so, even trying. Nope. It's a, this is the xenophobic media we're talking here. And also the no non fact checking ones. Yeah, I can't see I don't a know. thing posted, you're like, must be true. Yeah. Like, in South America, there are a variety of vats available, but in Europe, like in Europe, they're rarely used for food as well. Unless you want popcorn bats. <laughs> Unless you want. <laughs> in, in Transylvania, South America. Dracula also has a drive-in there where you can buy <laughs> bat nuggets. What kind of dipping sauce can we get with this? I really mm. want some blood sauce. Probably ketchup. Oh, okay. Blood orange. <laughs> blood orange <laughs> sauce. Yeah, it's a sweet and sour kind of sauce, probably. Mm, delicious. Yeah. When it comes to catching a bat, it's kind of simple, but can be also kind of dangerous. A hunter would often equip themselves with nets or net guns to catch these bats, and then they're bagged for transport. 
The hazard mostly comes from securing the bats after capture, so most of them don't have any protective gear, like even gloves or whatever. So oh, These are bitey little fuckers. They are bitey little fuckers, so they tend to get scratched or bitten because of that. Aside from the cuts you get from the bites or scratches, you also run the risk of getting disease, as we mentioned, or rabies, like dogs. Rabies. rabies. I'd rather have rabies than babies. That's just a personal take. Though. Wow, that's a... That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you must really hate babies that much. I do. <laughs> At home, if you do end up seeing a bat in your home, the best way to get rid of the bat is to just give the bat garlic. an opportunity to oh. escape. <laughs> <laughs> garlic. Not garlic. <laughs> Those are vampires. Oh, right. Whoops, my bad. Species of human. Vampires are species of human. They're not species of bat. Yeah. The more you know. Exactly. Science. <laughs> The reason why you want to give them an opportunity to escape is because they probably don't actually want to be stuck in your home to begin with. So if they're, if you see them in a room or something, just close all the doors and open up a window to let the bat out. But make sure you don't light up the bat's exit point. They're not like us. They won't walk into the light. They'll walk into the dark? I guess so, yeah. So you probably want to so light like up your night, room. It'll just and, um, leave. Yeah, just get them out. Um, you don't have Unless to scare they're them. like uh, flies or wasps that just repeatedly slam their face into the glass. I think the microbats might not because they use echolocation. So oh, they right. won't see glass. They'll just hear. They'll hear. Well, they yeah. kind of see. I don't know. I don't know what it feels like for them to echolo- echolocate because we don't do that. Yeah. For them, like, they... Yeah, I don't know how they hear it. They probably... It's like how you hear how a room could be bouncy or how you're far away or not. Like even when you were testing the microphones. Mm, all right. Yeah. It'd be something like that. I just think it's really cool that some animals have senses that we don't have. And it's yeah. impossible to quantify what that feels like for them. Yeah. For the most part, it's, it's them having more heightened sense specific, I guess they're more talented at specific senses. So if you want to try it out, you could try to be blind for a while. And you mm, might you might develop really hard. better hearing skills because I know there are some studies that show that if you're limited in one specific in in one sense, some of your other senses will help adapt to Be it. Be good, yeah, not yeah. always, but sometimes. We should um when uh, restaurants are open again, we should go do that um, blind restaurant. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Eat in the dark. I'd be down. All right. Hopefully they serve bat. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to be serving bat for a long time. Yeah, I guess not. Now that it's uh, associated with the coronies. Yeah, fair enough. Well, when it comes to cooking bats, you could actually cook bats, though, in a variety of ways. You could grill it, barbecue it, roast it, boil it, fry it, however way you want. Popcorn. Yeah. Oftentimes, when we're looking to the dishes, they're usually cooked whole rather than chopped up into popcorn. The one issue, though, that comes about when preparing bats, especially when you prepare it whole, is bats kind of stink. I've never sniffed they a bat stink before. So a lot. They their hide isn't the most Are they greasy? pleasant smelling one. Yeah, I would imagine like I don't no know if greasy is the right animal. word, but yeah, they're kind of gross. Yeah, no wild animal is really that pleasant smelling. I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. Like, have you ever petted a moose? No, I haven't. They're dripping with grease. Oh, really? It's yeah, I think I've heard really about gross. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So smell wise, I'm not sure, but like. Because I just, I can't smell anyway. <laughs> I have a horrible <laughs> sense of smell. So if you could smell it, then it must be bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Because they do stink a lot, you often want to prepare a bat by first cutting that scent with stronger odors like garlic, peppers, or onions. Even if you chop the bats up. To do that, you'd want to kind of keep the bats, I guess, almost marinating with this, with these sauces <laughs> to get the odors out. Makes sense. Yeah. As we mentioned, the most... You usually see a bat whole, so the most common way to see bats served is seeing a whole smoked bat in the soup or a stew. Smoking is also actually Wait, a good way to... a whole bat? Too. Like a whole bat? A whole you... bat just dumped into a bowl of soup, yes. You know, I've seen... I saw it when, this, when the coronavirus thing first started, and they were yeah. saying how bats were whatever. I saw a picture of, like, bat soup... Yeah. And I don't know how people eat that because, yes, yeah. it's a whole ass bat. It's yep. It's got its eyeballs. It's got its yep. fur. It's got its teeth. Yep. But I'm like, how do you eat this? How do you, are you biting? Are you eating the hair? 
Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it would be like when you eat fish and they give you the whole fish. You just kind of okay, but pick fish at it. like is not hair and teeth. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah it has teeth, but it's when, not hairy. Yeah, well, when you usually prepare or cook the bat, you kind of burn off the hair too. But yeah, I, I see what you mean. Sometimes the hair is still there, though. Yeah, I don't know. It just it just looks like it's sleeping and it's just wet. Yeah, <laughs> it's really sad. I don't. Yep, if I'm eating, gross. like, I am an eat meat, an eat meter, <laughs> meat eater, eat but meter. I don't want my food to be shaped like the animal that I came uh, from. Fair enough. Yeah, a lot of people in the West don't seem to be able to handle seeing the animals whole. Yeah, no. Especially because I, I think it's cute. <laughs> Wait, you love it? Would you seeing eat full a whole ass bat? I don't know. I don't think I would eat bat, though. I just meant seeing, like, a whole animal. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never had, um... Is this part of Boodle Fight where they have a whole pig? Yeah. Well, it could be, but it's more yeah. lechon, which is the roast pig. Yeah. It's a dish in yeah. itself, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I would like that, actually. We could try it. We should try it. Get some friends. It's like, I think you could get it for 250 bucks for the whole pig, I think. How do we socially distance eat a whole pig? <laughs> I think we'll have to wait for the end of this whole social distancing. Times. Thing. Yeah. End of times. Exactly. Before we all die. Hmm. We'll go out eating a pig. Yep, that sounds good to me. That sounds good to me too. I'm fine yeah. with that. When it comes to bat dishes, though, we can't cover all the kinds of dishes of the bat in the world. Um, so I figured we'd give just a couple examples here. In Cambodia, which is a country in Southeast Asia, one common dish is bat soup. Shout out to Nick who is looking for a bat soup recipe. This is your moment here. Mm, I expect you to make this happen. Yeah, let's, let's see if you could make this happen. You can substitute with a lump of jello that's shaped <laughs> like a bat. Yeah. <laughs> sure. It might I mean, it's, be. I don't think they're readily available for purchase here. I don't think so. We, we, we can't we, even we'll, buy toilet paper these days. Let's, let's find, let's find, find a, a black market um, bat dealer. <laughs> so especially in the southeast Kandal province of Cambodia, you'll find bat soup. Believed to be a medicinal bat soup that could help cure things like respiratory disease. <laughs> if you Contrary. consume it with the blood of the bat. <laughs> I think it'll make it worse. <laughs> or cure any pro- eye problems if you happen to be lucky enough to have bat eyes in the bat. I mean, don't they come with eyes? Yeah, well, I don't know. Sometimes maybe it falls fall off out. or yeah, something like that. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> What's interesting about the bat soup here in um, in the Candel province, is it's presented similar to how we do large shellfish like rob like lobster, like lobster or lobster. crab here, yeah, in North America. So you know, and usually you go to a restaurant here. If you want to order lobster or crab, they'll kind of make you pick which lobster or crab you want. It's the same way there, where they'll send out a cage of bats, and you could pick you which pick bats. Your lucky, lucky friend. Your lucky friend, exactly. COVID twenty seven. <laughs> And there you could have what a choice. What happened to 20? I don't know. And 21? Six, six um, customers later, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's too late in the line. Yeah, not not all of them can be very severe. Exactly. Not all of them have what it takes to be a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are just tasty. Yeah. After you choose the bat, you're given the option to either eat it raw or have it as part of the soup. If you have it raw, they'll kill the bat right in front of you, skin it, cut it up into pieces, and have you just present it in front of you for you to eat. If you choose the soup option, then they'll go in the kitchen, kill it, and prepare the soup for you. The soup itself usually will have things like coconut milk, lemon, some peppers. That sounds good, except for the bat part. And then a big-ass bat in the middle of the bowl. (laughs) I agree with you. The soup sounds great. So, Nick, if you're hearing us, that's how bat soup's made. Coconut milk, lemon, peppers, and whatever seasoning you want. And a whole ass bat. And you just drop the bat there. Um, (laughs) And if you want to prepare the bat, it's the same, I think, in most places. You'd want to cut the flavor or the stank of the bat by dipping it in garlic or mixing it with onions first and then smoking it with all those flavors. I think that's what gets me. Dunking the bat the soup. It's like, it doesn't taste good like well, you have to cut the taste with something it smells it bad it doesn't necessarily taste bad but like you know scent is half of your taste 
It is, yes. So if it's not good, why are you eating it? I don't know. It, it says That's that, a rhetorical question, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people like it. It's a, it's a, I think it's a taste thing. I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, I like stinky tofu. Yeah. But I don't find it stinky. Right. I, I find it pungent. That would probably be a similar thing. Like People probably think bats are just pungent. <laughs> As we mentioned in Palau, um, they also have a similar recipe that uses coconut milk, different spices. They would usually include ginger as well as a spice compared to the one in Cambodia, which I don't think has. See, that all sounds good still. Yeah. In Indonesia, one common bat dish is the paniki. The paniki. <laughs> Yeah, Pernicky. native. It's Don't native. Be a meanie. <laughs> is that what? Is that a song? Yeah, it's by oh. Lil Nas. Oh well, guy that sang "Old Town Road." I wonder if he knew what he was talking about with panini. No, he was. It's actually panini. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I know nothing about popular culture. Yeah. Panini. Don't you be a meanie. It's lyrical gene. It's very powerful. That's funny. Powerful words. Yeah. The paniki, on the other hand, is native to the Minasan people in North Sulawesi in Indonesia, which is located somewhere in the northeast region of Indonesia. Paniki is a soup-like dish as well, which you add grilled or fried bat to. Mm, Fried. Yeah. So I think with... I'm not sure exactly how you cook the one in Cambodia. I'm assuming it's roasted or grilled as well. This one is similar where they put grilled or fried bat. The reason for grilling or frying is because it helps remove all the hairs. Yes, the hair needs to go. And then the bat is often cleaned out and the intestines cut are removed and then they are cut to chunks. So compared to the Cambodian bat soup, which has the whole bat just dunked. Paniki is, it's it's soup-like, but it kind of also looks stewy, like a thick stew. But essentially, it's more like they cut up the bat. So you clean it up, you cut it up, and then you put so it into it's a not, dish. It's not bat-shaped. Not bat-shaped at all. Great. S- similar, though, to Cambodia, uh, they also use coconut milk, pepper, onions, garlic, and ginger. You See, often eat this with rice, which is why, me, which is why no. I, I think it's more stewy than it is soupy. No rice. Only bat. <laughs> Fine. Only your choice. Your, your grave. No rice. <laughs> in China, some places in South China can give you the option to add a whole bat to your hot pot. Ooh, it sounds, hot when bat. I was looking into this, it sounded more um, gimmicky or it's not a common, right. it's not a common thing. Is it a grammable food? Kind of. Yeah. It's kind of yeah, one of those it's grammable. things. It's like, I've fallen for so many like grammable desserts that just taste like nothing but sugar. Yeah, it's like every Vancouver like restaurant. Bat. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, that ice cream looks ooh, so good. And I like, get cool one. Lemon it doesn't taste like dairy. Yeah. I'm like, what are you made of? Mm, yep. White substance. <laughs> I mean, I hope it's not what I'm thinking. <laughs> Bats. Bats. Yep. Bat teeth. And bat ice cream. Bat teeth ice cream. Mm mm. Um. In the country of Sao Tome and Principe, Estufa de Mocrego. Estufa de Mocrego is a form of bat stew, which is a common dish during festivals or saints' days. Yeah, I couldn't really find any recipes for this, but the images of it, I don't know, they look kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lastly, kind of gross, like the picture of the bat, the whole wet, sad bat. Yeah. That's well, this dead. one looks yeah. more like paniki. So it's not mm. a whole bat. Don't be a meanie. All yeah. right. It's just the colors are weird. <laughs> Lastly, I found in Chiang Mai, Thailand, they there mash bats into a paste by boiling the bats with spices and then mashing them up until it becomes pasty. Bat paste. Bat paste. Yep. Mm. I don't know how. I don't even know how to feel about that. Yeah, I don't know either. I was looking at all of these meals and I'm like, I no. don't know which one I would pick <laughs> if I had like to. Like none of them. Maybe the paniki. Or I mean, I guess with the whole bat, then you could just not eat the bat and drink the soup. You know which one I would pick? Popcorn bat. Popcorn bat might be good. Yes. It's like it's popcorn crickets, but bat. Yeah. Deep fried. Yeah. So those are all the 
recipes or not recipes all the dishes i found around nick can go crazy so yeah nick there you go um you have a ton of options there of what you could do with bat and from bat soup to bat stew to bat bat paste to bat stew to bat paste i hope it comes out of a tube bat popcorn Mm, yes (laughs) angel's favorite yeah love it just crunch crunch (laughs) crunch can't stop (laughs) have some blood orange sauce yum (laughs) earth yum the one thing I was randomly wanting to find out is whether or not you could eat guano or bat poop. Mm. What I found is I'm definitely against eating poop of any kind. Yeah, I find that gross too. But I had to ask because guano just came to my mind right when I was researching, and I found it's a hundred percent definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in your mouth, Nick. Guano is definitely not edible. The one issue about guano is, as we mentioned. Bats can be quite good at d- carrying Diseases. disease. Yeah. So you run the risk of getting really sick with guano um, to the point that even when, because guano can dry up, so it gets dusty. So if you ruffle oh, if up you inhale a, it. Yes, yeah, so if you ruffle up a, a, a pile of guano, it could dust up and the spores can travel into you. And you could get sick because of dust. Poop so when you dust. see a pile of guano, just, just don't dust. snort it's it, man. Dust. Yeah. Um, one common disease is histoplasmosis, which is not contagious, but rather inf- it's more infectious. It's a bacteria or, yeah, I think it's a fungi um, disease. It's yep. similar to the flu in terms of what you get, uh, but it can also lead to longer term problems like TB or, well, death. Death. <laughs> it's permanent. Like term. anything in life. Yeah. So as we do in Smorgasbord, we ask, three two questions about all of this is it healthy or is it good when it comes to health do we um, ask those questions yeah every episode oh my god where have i been? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> generally speaking there are some cultures that believe eating bats have medicinal properties that can help cure diseases but it seems in my research that eating bats can be more dangerous than it is healthy for you. Um, as we mentioned, as we all know, major risk of bats are their good carriers of a number of different diseases like SARS and oh, potentially yes. COVID-19 as well. The least fun. Yeah. Yeah, you should watch Contagion. Yeah, keep, people keep telling me to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like the thing to watch. Well, let me finish my K-dramas it's first. Okay, those are more important. Yeah. Because Contagion is like too real right Cra- now. Yeah. Crash <laughs> Landing on You on Netflix, everybody. I swear it's great. The I guess are... that's my next one. I finished watching Next in Fashion. Oh, E was watching that too. That's because I told her to. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, Crash Landing's fun. It's not like an Oscar winning type of movie, but. Oh, no, it's fun. I like fun. But kind of going back to bats, they also seem to carry other viruses like the Hendra virus or the Nipah virus. Um, What's scary about them is they can fly, so they could spread this infection around. So just be safe when you eat bats, I think. Cook them real well. Yeah. Make sure you fry them into popcorn. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But even if you do cook them, I found one example in Guam where Parkinson's disease-like symptoms start affecting a group of people in Guam. Mm. Oh, I've heard of this. Yeah, so when scientists tried to understand what was causing the disease, they rooted it back to giant fruit bats of Guam. Because these bats would eat a fruit from psychotic trees that contain neurotoxins. So the bat meat itself would have the neurotoxins in it. Right, and it doesn't affect them like it affects us. Yeah, exactly. Sounds, Sounds about right. So just, I would stray away from eating bats. Just yeah, for, at this point, I think if you really want meat, you can get it. Eat a chicken. Yeah, if you don't have if if you don't have anything else to eat, sure, go eat a bat. But just cook it well, or I mean, it's like chicken. <laughs> just cook it well, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the second question we usually ask is: Is it good? Aside from the pungent smell of bat, I would say, it's say not. I say no too. I don't think it sounds good. They do say t- the meat itself tastes like chicken. Like everything? Just like stinky chicken. Yeah. Which, like, I'd rather eat non-stinky chicken. Exactly. So, I'd avoid it. I don't think it's good. <laughs> I Same. So, don't eat the guano, and we wouldn't recommend eating the bats either. Wah-wah. Yeah. That's a double whammy. Yeah. Double um, no. 
No from me, coach. Just just be friends with the bats, you know? Make bat friends. Yeah, take pictures of them. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, with Agreed. them, not mm-hmm. off them, Angel. No. Oh, sorry. Taking pictures of random bags and trees. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really weird. <laughs> but it's even weirder that it turned out to be a bat. <laughs> Uh, what's in like your palate today? Well, quarantine's not going very well over here. <laughs> I've been eating Cheetos. Because <laughs> um, I can't motivate myself to cook. Yeah, I hate enough. it. So I'm looking forward to when we do our remote video episode. <laughs> it'll actually force, force me to, to cook. Like, turn on my stove. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been eating a lot of chips and drinking a lot of forms of alcohol. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, that's we're the so episode. healthy. We're so healthy. Quarantine's definitely done a number in our health. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's like you, you crave the unhealthiness of the film industry. So. I know. I'm just like, oh man, I should have told Crafty I love them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had the chance. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that's our bad episode. Uh, All right, thank, good thanks trip. for listening. Bye. I don't know. Good luck. This is Smorgasbord. Have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow Smorgies. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico. <laughs>